spent the day at the New Jersey School of Woodwork today teaching two ladies roughly our ages. We made a couple bowls. We had a great time. A lot of fun up until the, the second lady had a big catch. So one lady's here. I'm tending her. The other lady's here. And I thought she was the second lady. Too. They were both doing really good. Just turning up and everything's nice and harmon harmony and everything's going good. Boom! What did you do wrong? I don't know what I did. I have no idea what I did. What do you mean you don't know what you did? You have to do something, right? How did, how were you holding the, the tool to the wood? Were you doing it the way I said? No. <laughs> Instead of going this way, she had it turned this way. Popped off. Luckily, she didn't get hurt. There was no blood. Um, but at the school, they didn't have the, the proper... Um, they, didn't, they needed a bigger cold jaw, so we ended up having to go back to my house because I've got a big set of cold jaws, actually the, uh, the, the Longworth chuck, and we had to remake the, the foot, right? So I gave her the good old line that <laughs> we don't have any mistakes in wood turning, we just have design modifications, <laughs> right? So luckily, luckily there was enough wood left in there that I was able to return it and we, we got her on her way. So that was pretty good. All right, so just a re refresher for, I don't know if everybody in the audience can see, we're going to be making one of these little birdhouses tonight. These are really cute. When I first saw these about three... Yeah, come on camera, oh, I, I thought the camera... What's what the PZT camera's going? Well, we haven't set that up. All right. I thought, I thought you're all set up, Alan. So at this point in time, I think I've made, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 50 of these. And since it's right before Christmas, and I've given a lot of these away for Christmas presents the last couple of years. So everyone's a little bit different. Everybody that we've given them to just goes, ah, thanks so much, Bob. That's really nice of you. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the body first. <clears throat> and what I like doing is I pre-drill the birdhouse entrance and the hole for the perch on my drill press so that it's nice and low. I've already put a little tenon on here. Hopefully I can do this without just flying off the lathe. Let me see. Really good here, Bob. And Bob, what's the benefit of these Edo Donald Chuck? It gives you it gives you a little bit more if you need more room in the back the back end, it gives you a little more room. Repeat the question for the The question was what's the advantage of the of the O'Donnell Chuck? And the advantage is it gives you a little more room if you if you need to get to the back of it. Did I, did I get by with the last 15 years without an O'Donnell truck? Sure I did. But it's a toy. Alan understands the, the need for toys. Usually when I'm giving lessons, I like telling the story about the lady turner who did not put up her hair and it got caught up in a lathe that pulled her in and it killed her. So you do have to be very careful around the lathe. It's, uh, it's small, but it's, it can be deadly if you're not doing the right thing. That's why I take off, I don't wear a ring. I always take off my watch. Okay, so I want to drill a little bit lower than the perch. So that's pretty much this whole bit. So I also like, when I'm demonstrating, I like demonstrating that the lathe is also a drill press. Okay, so I think I'm in here nice and tight. I am putting forward motion towards the headstock, so I'm really not worried about the lateral motion going this way. Has anybody made one of these before? Yeah, a couple, couple people. Okay, so the lay, again, the lathe is a drill press, but instead of the bit turning, the wood is turning. They do a one inch hole. If you, my daughter's boyfriend wanted one, a real one, for hummingbirds, right? So we made a much bigger, the whole thing was about this big and about that wide. So it depends on what you're, what you're doing. Drill slow, turn fast, color slow, sand slow. Uh -oh. You can see what I'm doing.
Not a powerful lathe. Clear the chips. And now I'm at a quill. This is the quill. So I'm going to reposition like that. Turn it back on. Clear the chips. <laughs> Not a whole lot of power on this little lathe. Okay, so now I got a one inch hole here. And I've got my two holes there, so three holes total. Okay, don't need this anymore. Now, you said two other holes. You have the one hole and the one inch hole. There's, the there's a, a entrance hole. There's and there's a little hole here that you might not be able to see for the perch. Oh, for, the, for the perch, for the little perch there. Okay, and again, I pre-drilled them because quite honestly, <laughs> a couple times I've made them round first and then I tried to drill those two holes perfectly in line and I tend to miss. <laughs> so it should be easy for an experienced woodworker, but apparently not. Okay. Um, that drill only came here, but I'm really um, stressing this lathe. So I'm, as long as I got that, well, I'm gonna go a little deeper. I'll go a little deeper, but I'm really hurting this little lathe. We got a hole drilled. I never really wrote down the instructions for this, so. Okay. This is my favorite part when we're making tops in front of other people. And what part is that, might you say? And I say, that's the net loud, net loud part. My favorite sound, I love it. Just knocking the corners off. Now I should have uh, my 60 degree live center in here, but I was repositioning stuff from my other tools today. So all I'm really trying to do is make, make a nice cove in there. Okay, the first thing you gotta do is knock the corners off. Gonna make a cove. And if you're not confident in your cove making abilities with your spindle or bowl gouge, you can use a carbide tool. When you're using a carbide tool, you keep the, the handle parallel with the floor of the bed. You don't tilt it one way, you don't tilt it this way, and you don't tilt it up and down this way. It always stays parallel and it stays on center line. When you're making a cove, you start at the top and you go towards the center. Back and forth. Okay, I'm going to use my handbrake. Not quite round yet. nice around I like that shape I got to do more over here keep the trip the chips off your tool rest using my hand as a as a break following just a regular um, 
I'm not following a, a, a pattern for this. I, ba I basically have an idea in my mind what I want to do. If these are all a little bit different in shape, it's no big deal, right? We'd like to get the proportions, you know, pleasing to your own eye. Wall thickness? Yeah. It's uh, about three sixteenths right now. That's where you go. Yeah, it's about. But you can make it. Yeah, it depends on the on the uh, on the diameter of the wood. You can make it thicker, you know. But it is a a tree ornament, so if you hang it up, you really don't want to pulling down a, a branch. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding. Typically, I'll, I, my favorite finish is combination of triple E polish, you know, the, the gritty shellac -y, um, with, with pumice in it. Tonight, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put my, I usually put triple E polish and then the Myelin's friction polish on. Okay. This one? Okay. Let's see, I can put some, I'll just give it a nice little shake. It's a quick, easy finish. It's a friction polish, so you only need a couple, couple coats. I think this works great for pens. A lot of people like using CA glue. I hate using CA glue for pens. I know some people love it, but I think it's, it's a nasty smell. I don't like the fumes. It is nice, by the way, if you're going to start out with a piece of figured wood. So this, this spalted maple is really nice to use, you know, but any type of fix of, of some kind of embellishment that's already built into that. So like the box elder over there would be perfect for this because it's already got the colors built into it, right? Okay. I'm going to do one more thing. Let's see. I'm going to shape the, I'm going to shape it a little bit. I'll go ahead and turn a little bead on this also. If you're watching the, a recent episode of Bob's Woodshop, you've seen that I just made this hand on and with, and this ferrule. rest is a little low. Now we stop the lathe when making adjustments. So If you're not confident in your bead making ability, and this is a small one, you can use a beading tool in order to make that. Okay. Huh? A cheating tool. No big deal. Been using them for years, and my beads are much nicer when using my beading tools. I'm perfectly okay to say I use beading tools. And I've got a bunch of them. I got a whole book, whole bunch of them. A little bit more out here. All right. So you don't have to put the bead on there. You don't have to do anything really. But it's nice to have that little feature on the on the bottom. So now I got to turn it around and use the those pin jaws, and drill a hole in the bottom. But before I do that, I might as well part it off. So everybody's got a parting tool, but I don't know if everybody's got a, 
So that's a like a normal parting tool, right? Let me see here, right? But these thin, these thin ones are really nice also. How can this PZT thing's not working? Well, just put it by the chuck. There? Ah, okay. Some people get a little saw when they do that. You know, I'd just rather part it off like that, so. Okay, how do you get the chuck off when it won't work anymore? With just your arms, you can use your tool as a lever, like that. Try not to smack your face shield, Bob. Russell talked a lot about these chucks about the precision, how strong they were and how beautiful, beautifully made. They do have a video, Axminster has a video on that on their YouTube channel. They start with a solid block of stainless steel and manufacture that. It's really ni it's a nice chuck. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the pin jaws. And what I gotta do, I gotta drill a hole in there and I gotta get rid of that little nubbin that was left over. What we're going to do next, after, do, after we do this, we're going to make the, uh, the finial. The finial is fun. So this is just snug. Oops. And you're on the inside of the holder, right? Yeah, it's, it's an expansion mode. Now you might say, hey, Bob, I don't have a pin jaw chuck. Bob, I don't have a pin jaw. Hmm. So what you can do, you can make a jam chuck. Oh, you just get one of your top blanks. Get one of your top blanks and make your own. Yeah, but right. can you drill with that? Yeah. Yeah, you can drill into that if you want. So instead of having this in there, I could have this on this, and I just drill through that. It's a piece of wood. It doesn't cost anything. You get them for free at the New Jersey Wood Turners. So I need a hole. First, there's a little tiny nubbin on there. I got to get rid of that. So I always like telling people that come to my shop, the danger of visiting, you know, weekend workshops or going to other members' shops is you always go, I don't have that, and I don't have one of them, and I don't have that. And you got to go home and you tell your wife, I got to go spend $500. Bob's got that stuff, and I don't have that stuff. And I'm a wood turner. I want that stuff. Okay, again, you drill slow. And then I'm going to use the Jacob's chuck. I'm going to just draw a small hole like this, turn the lathe off, and back it out, and that part's done. The body is done now. So I drilled a quarter inch hole to match my high tech measuring device, a little cheapy wrench, and that wrench is going to fit that, fit that drill. And you might say, Bob, why do I need that? And I said, well, because we're going to make the little tenon on the on the um, finial. That's going to be a quarter inch. So that's going to fit in like that. Okay. So that'll fit there. That'll fit in there. We're going to super glue it at the end. These are some practice finials. I've, how, how many people have made finials? Five or six, right? Easy to do. If you watch Cindy Droza do it, who's the finial queen, <laughs> she, makes it, she makes it look easy at the same time as she makes it look hard because she goes into a lot of detail. I'm not going to bore you with all that. I'm just going to show you the, easy, the fast, easy way to do it. Okay, so I got a nice piece of spalted maple. And I'm going to start out with a piece of paduk. I like to use a, um, a different color to add interest to the piece.
Now, again, if you didn't have a, a little chuck, what would you do, right? So you might have to start out with a larger piece of wood and, and uh, turn it down, okay? So I'm just using a pen blank here for this. I always tighten on both sides of the chuck. It's always good practice to use uh, tailstock support. All right, so what I'm going to do then is my favorite part again, rounding off. So you'll notice when I'm turning, I'm not standing over here, moving my arms left and right this way. I'm, I'm starting, I'm going left to right. So I'm starting with my weight to the left and I'm gonna move my body to the right. So I've got a point of contact on the tool rest where I also call the, the hand rest and I'm using my big belly in order to have another anchor point over here. Okay. okay. So if you want to be a good turner, that's, that's one of the, the tricks right there. I'm going to check to see if I'm round. I'm not quite round. I'm going to start making a conical shape. I'm making a cone. Oh, sorry. Actually, I'm really not worried about this particular project because it's so small, right? Uh, it will keep the chips out of your eyes, but hey, there have been times when, you know, I think we've probably all experienced it where something's flying off the lathe. So, so good practice, you might, as well, you might as well work it, so thank you. All right, so. If you don't already have a pre-made finial, I'm just going to duplicate one of these, right? I'm going to, I would suggest that if you're going to try this, go ahead and make several of them before you do one for the actual project and get, get, get some practice in. But if you take a look at it, what is this thing? It's a finial, but I've got a bead, I've got a cove, I got a bead, I got a bead, I got a bead, and then I got another cove. And then I got a straight shot over here. Okay, straight tenon. All right, so really not that tough. So what you can do is uh, just make a bunch of Spend an afternoon making some. And get into the get into the habit. All right, so I'm going to use this as a uh, as a template. So I'm going to have a small bead here. I'm going to have a the big bead here. I'm going to have my cove, and then I'm going to have my tenon here. So I'm going to mark those points off. Okay. So those are, those are my measurements. And there's all kind of YouTube videos to show you how to do this, but since you're a New Jersey wood turner, you're going to learn how to do it for free tonight. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make the bead first. And you can do this whatever, whatever order you want, but you're usually working from the bottom up. But I feel like making the bead first. So if you're making a bead, when you're making a bead, you start at the top of the bead. You start at the top of the bead and you work your way to the bottom of the bead. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the tool here and I'm gonna go starting at the top the motion is you're raising the handle and turning the handle at the same time. So it's a two part, just a two part motion. This is a uh, detailed spindle gouge. Okay, so that's a bead. 
Now, if, again, if you're not confident in your ability, until you work your way up to making a bead uh, with a spindle gouge, go ahead and buy some, some, cheater, some cheating beaters. So now I'm going to start working on the um, on this big cove. This is a cove here. So left, right, left, right. I'm just making that nice and thin. So none of, <clears throat> none of this stuff actually comes naturally. You know, you've got to practice your craft. Everybody screws up at the beginning. It is good to get some lessons. It's good to be in a wood turning club. That's right. I'm going to make another bead over here. Okay. I'm going to use my parting tool to make part of the tenon. Too tall. This works a lot better if you stick your tongue out if you go like that. For the wrench, oh, I should do a little sanding first. Do a little sanding. So this is also the bead is also called the onion when you're making these things. Put some more finish on. If you want to, what, one thing you can do, you can make a whole bunch of beads and a whole bunch of houses and a whole bunch of roofs, and then you can kind of mix and match them if you put like different sizes together and see what's aesthetically pleasing to you. So this should keep you, if you're gonna try this, this should keep you busy between now and Christmas. And believe me, when you give somebody a handmade gift, it's much better than you give them 20 bucks or a card, right? Because they're going to remember that, especially if they put that on their Christmas tree every year. And most of my family members who have these, they keep them up all year round, somewhere around the house. Can you zoom in on that now? So you can use calibers, but if you're using, if you're doing small spindle work, you, you can use your wrenches, and they're probably uh, better to, to to use than a, a pair of calibers.
Okay. So now I'm on. Now I can get my saw, or you can bring it over to the radio arm saw and chop that off. <laughs> this lady I was teaching a, a bowl today, there was a, we had to take the foot off. And she goes, how are you, how are you going to take the, uh, uh, the foot off? How are you going to cut it off? Because it was about two and a half inches in diameter. She goes, can you put it on the bandsaw? <laughs> Jesus, you got a lathe. No, you're not going to cut off a, a foot with a bandsaw, right? Just use, your, use, your, use what's in front of you. So, hard it. Da -da. Okay. Easy. So now we got to make the. Now we got to make the roof. And the roof is you get to use another chuck. Giving you all kind of excuses to go buy some more tools, get yourself for stuff for Christmas. So, again, this, this is a great project if you got a bunch of scraps in your house. If you're a furniture maker, right, and you get you got all kind of stuff. Um, you got all these. You got a scrap bin, and there's a bunch of stuff in the, in the back there. All right. So now, what do I got to do? I got to make a little roof, right? And I'm going to make that out of sapelli. Mahogany. This is this is the wood that I like using for when I'm doing a bolt turning class because it's uh, it machines great. It looks great. It finishes great. It sands great. It looks great. It's great. Check to see that I'm around. I have to make a uh, tenon on the bottom side of the roof to fit inside the house. Okay, so how do you do that? Use your parting tool. I was hearing vibration. If you're hearing some kind of weird sound, stop the lathe um, and figure out what's going on. So I don't have a one inch wrench. I will go back to using a one inch caliper. Okay. So everybody have pets, some of these from the, uh, you know, you can get them real inexpensively at uh, Harbor Freight, like, 18 bucks, you get an inside and outside and a compass and even a divider sometimes. All right, so when I'm doing this, I always make sure I really hate reaching over the lathe, you know, especially reaching over like this. You know, if you have if you have your tools over here and the lathe's turning on, I think it's probably how that woman got killed because she might have leaned over and got her hair caught up. Um, so I'm always really cautious. So whenever I do that, if I, I my tools are out here, so I'm uh, I always turn the lathe off if, if I'm reaching. My air compressor switches over here, too. Right. So stop the lathe. Okay. Give me back the birdhouse for a second. It's a little loose there, yeah? John, hand me that back for a second. I want to make sure that I got that, that I got that just right. I just want to make sure it fits before I turn it around. Thank you. I want it snug. It's a little bit too loose. Give it a little, give it a little kiss. Okay, and that's that sits nice and tight. I did. I did put a little bevel on there. I did. Did I put a little chamfer on here? And, and it is tapered just a little bit, so it fits in there like a quirk. Okay, so now I got to turn. Now I got to. So this is going to be the bottom of the top. Now I got to make the, the top of the top. Sounds familiar. <laughs>
So the top is basically a big sharp bead, right? Nothing fancy about it. And you, you can put a little cove into it if you want. And you'll notice the body action. All you really have to do is get something that's conical shape and something that's pleasing to your eye. All right. So now how do you turn it around? I'm going to put the other chunk back on. I'm going to go back to my pin jaws on this. Yes, you can do this with a, uh, a jam chuck, but it's a lot easier if you have this little g gadget. So I can put one inch in there. And I'm going to use tail stock support again. This is how you should have a tenon on a jaw on a on chucks. Okay, so it's not bottoming out on the bottom of the jaws. Okay, so now I got this big ugly hunk of wood that I gotta take out, take off. I'm gonna do that real nice and slow. So I'm taking like six, 16th of an inch cuts here. I'm not trying to hog this out, especially since I'm, I'm only gripping onto the chuck of it with about a half an inch of, of a spigot there. Huh? Good call, good ears. Again, if you don't like your ability with a, uh, I'm using a ball gouge or a spindle gouge, you could also use a, your carbide tool. It's a little bit too far away from the work. Always be going downhill from going thick to thin. Whatever's pleasing to your eye. Bam, we got a roof. Chant it to what uh to whatever your pleasure is. And this is just a if you want to spend the time to sand up to six hundred, knock your socks off. Knock your socks off.
Okay. So we almost got a complete roof. <coughs> there's a little, you'll notice there's a little eyelet. <laughs> Do I look like I'm parallel out there? I don't want to drill through the side of it. That's why I lift a little thick. Bam, there's a roof. We, had a, we just made a little house. Where's the birdhouse? So if you go to the Christmas tree shop or any place that has little stuff, or in my case, I just asked my wife, I said, go get me little tiny eyelids. That's, that's what I'm using. Uh, you can't zoom in on that, can you? I don't think you see that. You can use a little, you can use a little screw eye. Excuse me? Oh, I just bent it in half. It was, it was two inches long, I bent it in half. That was it. Okay, when you... I'm going to glue this on now. I'm going to try not to stick my hands anywhere near the CA. I really don't like CA. For, like I said, for pens. What is it? Oh, 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 on the, on the CA glue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. It's much easier to get this directly. I know what you're talking about. Now I'm putting glue on the inside and on the top of the top here, the top of the house. If you have a good fit, it should be kind of snug. When you put this on, make sure that the eyelet is per is in this in that direction, like straight f from front to back. If, otherwise, when you put the ornament the ornamental hook on, it doesn't quite work. Then I come back here. Put a little glue there, a little there, and then it's all done except for the perch. And I really don't feel like turning a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got the ability to do it, but I don't have the patience to do that. <laughs> yeah, hack. <laughs> no what kind of what kind of wood turner are you? You want to make your own perch? And I have seen the perches where they'll make it a little bead out there. There's toothpicks with beads on them. Speak up. There's toothpicks with beads on them. Yes. And then again, my wife helped me out. She, there's all kind of really fancy hooks that you can get. Ta-da! Ta-da! Very nice. Very nice, huh? Oop, oop. Near to Chuck, Bob. Near to Chuck. All right, worked out. Okay. So let the glue dry a little bit. I don't have any. I didn't bring my accelerator with me. But that's it. Not bad, huh? Pretty little thing. Okay. So.
That's it. Don't pull the top off yet, but you can just pass around. Just pass it around with the, uh, by touching the house. Okay. So that's it for the uh, demo tonight. I hope you get a chance to make some. You can see it's relatively simple, right? It's the new people, you know, some of you are you're just getting into, you know, the, the bowls and the and spindles, but that is a relatively simple project. You know, I wouldn't say it's a 101 class, but it's probably a 102 class. Right? There's, there's not a lot to it. There's, right, there's three turn pieces, a toothpick and a, and a uh, little eyelet. And you can use a little screw eye if you don't have these little, these little eyelets that, that my wife got for me, okay? So this is my little kit. Do we still have finials floating around? So that's it. Any questions? Any questions from the guys out in the peanut gallery? You know, relatively Bob explanatory. <laughs> Everybody enjoy that? Yeah? yeah. All right, good.